Hello! Today we're talking about a random horror movie called Grim Cuddy. It came out pretty recently on Hulu. I had no idea that this movie existed until a bunch of people asked me to review it. And so I was like, okay. <laughs> Sure. I'm your humble servant, viewers. I will do what you ask sometimes. That is unless you constantly ask me to make stuff for you on Twitter, relentlessly, every day, then I might not do it. This movie seemed like a no-brainer for me because it's about a meme, a killer meme. I feel like we're coming full circle. I've made videos on horror movies about dumb stuff like this. There was one about an app that killed you. There was one about a phone that killed you. There was even one about selfies that killed you. So it only makes sense that I'm making a video on this movie about a TikTok challenge that kills you. It's so stupid. I, like, just saying it. <laughs> it's pretty unbelievable that this exists. It was written and directed by someone named John Ross. I haven't seen anything he's made before. I would like to assume that this was like a goofy movie that he made for some random reason. But then again, it takes itself very seriously and it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> If you're gonna make a horror movie based on a TikTok challenge, you gotta have fun with it, okay? I know the monster in this movie is pretty silly looking, but I think the director was trying to make him scary. It came across that way, and whenever he popped up, I just laughed. And it doesn't help that his name is Grim Cuddy. Grim Cuddy. You sure you haven't seen it before? Because you know, if this was the real world, people would be saying, Oh no, here comes Grim Cuddy. Don't let him touch your Grim Bussy. Uh -huh. Oh shit. People would meme the shit out of this creature if he actually existed. I mean, just look at this thing. It looks like a cross between Jack Skellington and Gru. Like it has the body of Gru from Despicable Me, but it's like a skeleton version. And it really doesn't help that this movie starts with an ASMR video. I'm not kidding when I say that I burst out laughing when this popped up. They would put an ASMR video in a horror movie that I'm reviewing for my YouTube channel. It just all comes back around, doesn't it? There's even a real ASMR YouTuber in this movie. I think her name is GB ASMR or something like that. So yeah, shout out to that YouTube channel. I think I've seen one of her videos before. It was the B movie one. You like jazz. She got like a bunch of ASMR people to come together to make B-movie ASMR video where they just like read out the lines of the B-movie. I think they dressed up too, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. For some reason, GB ASMR wasn't credited at the end of the movie, maybe because she wasn't really a character in the movie, but it's still kind of weird. I like that this movie is using actors that I haven't seen before. And to be on a big streaming service like Hulu was pretty impressive. It was on the front page for a couple days, I'm pretty sure. There was a banner for the movie right there when you open the app. It probably won't be there by the time I upload this video, but it was there, trust me. I know because I saw it with my own eyes. I made it the fuck up. And they used this creepy skeleton Gru face to advertise the movie, and I think it was fairly effective. I also wanna say that the acting in this movie is pretty good for the most part. There are a couple scenes that come across a little bit forced, but other than that, pretty decent. It's just this grim cuddy creature. I couldn't take him seriously at all. He's like super lanky and goofy looking. You you get to see a lot of this thing. And the more you see him, the funnier it gets. In the very beginning of this movie, it shows this little kid being chased by Grim Bussy. I'm sorry, Grim Cuddy. <laughs> In the beginning of the movie, there's this crazy mother and her son, and we're shown that the son has been attacked by Grim Cuddy multiple times in the past, so this Grim Cuddy thing has been around for a while. The kid is approached by Grim Cuddy again, and so the kid randomly stabs his mom. <laughs> You're telling me this kid stabbed his own mother? He didn't have his coffee this morning. If only he had trade coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing segue, I know. If you love drinking coffee every morning and you love the idea of going to a coffee shop every single day, get that everyday, amazing, unique coffee taste by trying Trade. Trade is a coffee subscription service that makes it extremely simple for you to discover new coffees and make your best cup of coffee at home every day with no fancy equipment required. If you've been getting the same coffee nonstop at the grocery store, well, save yourself a trip and try something a lot better with Trade. It's so easy to get fresh roasts delivered straight to your doorstep, all from local roasters from around the country with Trade. Whether you already know what you like or are new to specialty coffee and need some help, Trade makes it easy and convenient to discover new coffees. They'll send you ground coffee or whole beans for however you make your coffee at home. I'm a massive lover of coffee and I drink it every day. I think Trade is an incredible service and a lovely treat. One of my more recent favorites from Trade is called Magdalena. The beans came from Colombia and they were roasted in San Diego. It has panela, orange blossom, and caramel tasting notes. My wife and I love it. Wonderful. 
Upgrade your coffee today with Trade Coffee and let them take the guesswork out of finding your perfect cup. Right now, Trade is offering my viewers $30 off your subscription and free shipping. Just go to drinktrade.com slash Elvis the Alien. That's drinktrade.com slash Elvis the Alien for $30 off your subscription to the best coffees in the country. The movie centers around a high school student named Asha. Asha is a small ASMR YouTuber and her YouTube name is Awesome Sauce 229 She needs to work on her branding. Although this is coming from the Elvis the Alien channel, and I did somehow get 1.6 million subscribers, so maybe I shouldn't talk. <laughs> the parents in this movie introduce a detox box, and they force their kids to put their phones and any sort of other device in this box so they can lock it and go a week or so without using anything. Because phone bad. bad. They need to cut down on their screen time. Because the parents blame the phones for their daughter's weird behavior. They tell us that there's this Grim Cuddy challenge going around that's causing kids to hurt themselves and others. But the movie isn't really sure if it wants this Grim Cuddy challenge to be real or not. There are moments throughout the movie when characters speak about the challenge as if it isn't real. This is bullshit! It's just a scary picture, that's all that it is, it's just... Hype! But it's more likely that the characters don't know what the challenge is, and for some reason never bother to look it up, even though it's directly affecting their lives. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they don't ever tell you what the Grim Cuddy challenge is in the movie, which I think would have helped. It's just like this random challenge involving this weird creature. There's a moment when Asha's mom opens a picture on her phone of Grim Cuddy, and it's accompanied by haunting music. <laughs> This is supposed to be a scary moment. I'm sorry, but this blurry ass image of this goofy clown thing with sharp teeth is not scary. So it comes across unnatural and forced. So there's this girl that goes to her high school that watches her YouTube channel. And as soon as Asha takes her phone out of the detox box, this girl calls her and she's like, oh, hey, what's up? Let's talk about Grim Cuddy. There's a scene of Grim Cuddy chasing Asha and it's pretty hilarious. This is the goofiest and fakest looking monster I've ever seen. Scene. It slowly chases her into a bathroom and then grabs her arm and cuts her. So there's a part when Asha grabs a knife because she's so terrified of Grim Cuddy. She's sneaking around her house because she doesn't want her parents to know that she's using her phone. She enters a bathroom and places the knife on the sink and she just leaves it there. If you're terrified that this monster could be around any corner, wouldn't you want to keep the knife with you? The only reason she left the knife in the bathroom is because the movie needed her to leave the knife in the bathroom so that later when she enters of the bathroom and she's being attacked by Grim Cuddy, the parents can blame Asha for Baba Bowie when it was really Grim Cuddy that cut her. And it confuses the audience, you know. Oh my god, is Grim Cuddy real or not? Or is it just in the kids' heads? Oh no! There's so much about this movie that's only meant to confuse the audience, but by the end of the movie when you put things together, it makes no sense. Asha's mom even checks the bathroom, but somehow doesn't notice that the huh? knife is sitting there. Every single Grim Cuddy attack is so conveniently planned out. Whenever he attacks someone, they're either holding a knife or there's a knife close by. So the parents can blame the kids' wounds on Baba Bowie. But I think the parents would worry a lot more if their kids had random knife wounds that showed up all over their bodies without any obvious cause. But that wouldn't confuse the audience, so Grim Cuddy can only attack the kids that are holding a knife. <laughs> when the parents find Asha, they don't believe that she saw this weird creature and that it cut her. They think that she's doing the Grim Cuddy challenge, and they're very upset with her. This blonde girl that randomly started watching Asha's YouTube channel says this. I need my phone. I can't fall asleep without Bob Ross. I can't fall asleep without Bob Ross. And then Asha says, Me neither. So that was a fucking lie. These girls are so desperate to find out more about Grim Cuddy that they go to a party to find a computer or a phone to use. Some kids at this party tell us that parents all over the town are going crazy. They're experiencing Grim Cuddy hysteria and taking their kids' phones away. I don't know. I might do the same thing if this crazy TikTok challenge was going viral. And I would like to say that this movie is ridiculous and off base and that this would never happen, but it probably could. In the beginning, Asha's father's friend tells him that he heard about the Grim Cuddy challenge via a news app and that it's making kids Baba Bowie and others. So there must be a challenge, right? Like if CNN reported on a viral, potentially deadly TikTok challenge, then it's more than likely that this challenge actually exists, right? I mean, why would they report on a challenge that isn't real? Perhaps Asha's family didn't bother to look it up because they don't believe in fake news. 
Asha's parents are so weird in this movie. The dad is like a psychopath with anger issues. And throughout the entire movie, Asha's mother is trying to calm him down. If I knew that my child was potentially caught up in an online challenge that causes them to Baba Booey, then I'd want to know more about the challenge. I would do some research on it. Do you even know what the Grim Cuddy challenge is? If this challenge existed, it'd be everywhere and people could easily find more information about it. Instead, they look up a weird article about it from the Crazy Mom's blog. And based on the title of this article, it doesn't seem like it would have a lot of useful information in it. Why couldn't the filmmakers just think up a simple Grim Cuddy challenge? I know why. Because it would probably be really stupid. <laughs> it would have to be some sort of like ritual that summons Grim Cuddy. Something along those lines. And how did the name Grim Cuddy come to be? The filmmakers didn't make any effort to explain anything about Grim Cuddy. And it doesn't make the movie more interesting or appealing. It just makes it confusing and irritating. There's this ridiculous TikTok video that this kid recorded with a bunch of their friends at this party. And they all basically pretend to Baba Booey due to the Grim Cuddy challenge. Asha's parents notice her in this video. So they go to fetch her from the house. So Asha can see Grim Cuddy, but nobody else can. Look at that, huh? Look at that. I'm not sure how she can see him and nobody else can. Why does he target you specifically? You know, why? This movie offers no explanation for this Grim Cuddy creature and it's hilarious. Also, how did they get a picture of Grim Cuddy? The only people that can see it are the kids that are being attacked by it. How do you take a picture of something only select people can see? Maybe it's a drawing, but it doesn't look like a drawing. Grim Cuddy ends up attacking Asha's brother. At the hospital, we get to see what's on this kid's laptop and there's practically nothing on it aside from like two images. Very realistic. Asha wanted to use the computer to see if her videos got any more views. Not really, but you know, in reality, she probably would do that. <laughs> Hilariously, on the news, there's a report about a large group Baba Booey. And they play the very obvious joke video of all those kids Baba Booey with fake knives. New disturbing reports of teens gathering together to try the Grim Cuddy Challenge and even engage in bizarre group Baba Booey. Like, come on, really? Eventually, Asha finds out about the woman from the beginning of the movie that got stabbed by her son. So she goes to their house. She goes there to ask them questions. She ends up breaking into their home after finding a broken laptop in their trash. Very normal behavior. Asha then finds that this woman's son is locked up in a closet. So she frees him. Asha's mother arrives at the home and finds Asha there. I'm unsure how Asha's mother knew where this was and how she knew that Asha was there, but I'm sure there's an explanation somewhere. But I just didn't find it, mainly because I don't care enough to find it. Asha tells her mother that this woman pointed a gun at her and locked her son in a room. So Asha's mother slaps her and escorts her outside. She punches the window and it just like shatters. I'm pretty positive it would not happen that way. Asha's mom confronts the other mom who left her son on the floor upstairs. <laughs> If she's that terrified that this grim cuddy creature is going to kill her or her son, why would she just leave him on the floor upstairs? <laughs> So the crazy mom at the beginning of the movie says, I have to contain it. She doesn't want this thing that's hurting her son to hurt other people. So then why write an article about it in your blog if you want to keep it a secret? What makes this funnier is that she ends up deleting this article later. She took it down. This mom is such a terrible person. She wins mom of the year award for locking her son up in a closet that she turned into a makeshift padded mental asylum room. <laughs> So I would stab her. And yeah, I mean, if my son attacked me with a knife, I would definitely try and find professional help for him. I don't remember anything like that. But I wouldn't lock him up in a closet. <laughs> Grim Cuddy then lifts him and then drops him. This kid then stabs his mother's leg. Asha's mother does a complete 180 in this scene. She goes from thinking that her daughter lost her mind to, oh yeah, I guess I was wrong. I'm gonna believe everything she says now. What really irritates me about this movie is that Grim Cuddy has no origin story. The prologue was practically useless in this movie. All it does is establish the threat of Grim Cuddy. Grim Cuddy has been hurting this little kid for some time until one day the kid stabs his mom because he made the the connection, right? He knows that Grim Cuddy feeds off of his mom's paranoia. And his mom stops worrying about him for a second and worries about herself, then Grim Cuddy will go away. How the hell did this kid come to that conclusion? <laughs> like, it makes no sense. I guess this kid knows how Grim Cuddy works because he read the script. That's the only logical explanation I can think of. The prologue leads the audience to believe that Grim Cuddy has some sort of cognitive stranglehold over these kids. Because why else would this kid stab his mom? But by the time the movie ends, you realize that that's not true. I think what they were going for is turning Grim Cuddy into like a symbolic manifestation of the parents' overprotective nature and the devastating effects that can have on their children. I think it would be a lot more effective then if Grim Cuddy couldn't lift
lift the kids like 12 feet in the air. Why does this thing exist at all? Where did it come from? We know very little about this thing. For some reason, only the kids that are being attacked by it can see it. And for some reason, it feeds off of the parents' paranoia. The more overprotective the parents, the more likely Grim Cuddy will show up to attack the kids. But we don't know why. <laughs> Asha's dad then confronts her brother at the hospital about his search history. <laughs> Apparently he looked up stuff like necrophobia and bat sex. <laughs> if he were my son, I would just be confused. I, I was just curious. There's then a pretty long scene of the family members rushing around the hospital, chasing each other. Grim Cuddy's in there somewhere. All I know is this hospital is strangely abandoned. Where is everybody? They're all just gone. The brother starts getting strangled in a closet by Grim Cuddy, and he miraculously escapes somehow. And then Asha gets strangled by Grim Cuddy. She shanks him a bunch, but he just gets up anyway. He licks a knife. It's so goofy. Grim Cuddy has Asha stab her father who tries to save her. Asha then attempts to be Zen like a true ASMR YouTuber <laughs> because the blonde girl says something to her earlier about how she wasn't how she expected her to be because an ASMR YouTuber has to be super zen, you know? I'm assuming she's never seen ghetto ASMR. He's basically an ASMR YouTuber that went insane. Apparently, Grim Cuddy feeds off of the parents' paranoia, but only when it relates to their children. It's very dumb. At the end of the movie, when Asha's father is sedated, Grim Cuddy just vanishes, indicating that the monster is somehow manifesting via the parents worrying about their kids. It feels like the filmmakers were going for a Charlie Kaufman vibe, or maybe like an Alex Garland type of movie. Something like Jordan Peele's Nope, a challenging, ambiguous movie that isn't 100% clear with their plot. A movie that cares more about symbolism and its themes than it does about explaining certain aspects of the movie to the audience. Like, yeah, I get it, movie. Overprotective parents can often make bad situations with their children a lot worse. But I don't think this Grim Cuddy creature is doing a great job turning this theme into art. Art. And it doesn't help that it looks goofy as hell. So is that really the explanation? That Grim Cuddy is just an extension of these kids' parents being too restrictive of their lives? Don't threaten to take my phone away or this random ghost will come out of nowhere and hoist me 12 feet in the air and strangle me. <laughs> The movie ends with Asha making another ASMR video on Grim Cuddy. Making an ASMR video on a tragic event that happened in your life is crazy. It's even weirder than this Joker ASMR video. Freedom. <laughs> or, I don't know, this ASMR video. Or the million other ones that are weird as hell out there. Making this movie coherent would have been nice. I mean, I had fun watching it. The movie did what the movie's supposed to do. It entertained me. So I think that's a plus. Good job, John Ross. Pretty fun movie. Let me know what you'd like me to review next in the comment section down below. Thank you so much to all my patrons out there that make videos like this possible. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Remember kids, don't use your phone too much, or you'll have to watch out for that grim bussy. Okay, bye.